Most people walk at night completely ignorant of the fact that directly above them is a vastness so great, filled with marvels and boundless energy. But in the words of the great philosopher Plato, astronomy compels the soul to look upward and leads us from this world to another. So, Kalpana, first time you saw the night sky, what, yes. did it, what did it look like for you? Well, it was a profound effect because it was the first time I put on glasses that I saw stars to be points. Prior to that, they were blobs. Wow. <laughs> and I think I just, I had to really take that in. Sure. And the fact that they're so tiny, but that's because they're so far away. What do we see? We see different sizes, yes. right? We see different brightnesses, mm -hmm. and we also see different colors. That's right. If you stare at Betelgeuse enough, which makes up the left shoulder of the constellation of Orion, you see that it's red. You truly can, with and your naked eye. And that's really cool that you can see it with your naked eye. But what exactly does that mean for the star? Like, why are some stars redder and some stars bluer? You know, that's a really cool thing about how stars operate. It's cool or hot thing? Oh, uh, well, it depends oh. which star it is. Yes, are true. you the red ones or are you the blue ones? That's right. But it all has to do with how much material they begin their lives with. Mm -hmm. If they start out with a whole lot of stuff, well, then they become these really, really hot, energetic blue-white stars. But if they start with a very small amount of material, they end up as being these really, really cool, deep red, even sometimes slightly brownish stars. That's how cool they are. And so you think of red stars or even red dwarfs yes. as smart cars. They're so good about their fuel. Mm -hmm. They just last forever. Mm -hmm. And those blue, blue ones, they're the inefficient stars of the universe. They're like Hummers. They're not environmentally friendly at all, but they die much quicker because that heat and that pressure is gonna burn through their nuclear fusion process so much faster. I like Vega. Vega is the brightest star in the constellation Lyra in the summer sky. And I like Vega because it twinkles with such a clean blue-white light. Mm -hmm. It looks like a diamond. Why do stars twinkle though? As we stand on the planet and we look out into space, we have this big layer of atmosphere over top of us, and that atmosphere has different layers of temperature. Well, those different temperature layers have different densities, and when light from stars passes through those different layers, they make the light waves bend around, mm -hmm. and that makes the stars appear to twinkle. Got it. So if you were in space without any atmosphere, yes. you wouldn't have any twinkle. Is this known as turbulence? That stuff happening in the atmosphere that mm -hmm. yeah right the atmosphere goes like this no. yeah, basically yeah. it's the best way we could describe but yes that's turbulence yeah. and turbulence affects how we see all of the objects in the night sky Absolutely. particularly the stars because we see that twinkle most people don't realize that you can actually tell the difference between stars and planets in the sky by using that turbulence and the twinkle mm -hmm. and it is that most of the time planets don't show twinkle absolutely right? because they're much closer. They're much closer. But if you see them lower, in nearer to the horizon, I should say, they have a chance of twinkling there to some degree, yeah, right? True. Because yeah. it's atmosphere is thicker. thicker. Yeah, right. absolutely. Yeah. I always think that people are unaware that they can actually see planets with their naked eyes. And I'm talking all the way to even Saturn, which is billions of miles away. How I tell them they can distinguish it is that planets tend to be the brightest looking stars in the sky. Venus would be the brightest one. Why is Venus the brightest? For two reasons. Number one, it's relatively close to us. You know, it's our next door neighbor planet headed toward the sun. But Venus also is completely surrounded by a very, very thick cloud layer. And those clouds are very reflective. So sunlight reflects off of those clouds and we see it as being this brilliant planet. And I have found too that all of these planets tend to like move in a in a path almost to some degree follow each other and if you observe them over hours you can kind of see them moving in one line across the sky. You know, this is a really cool aspect of this. If you go outside in the evening and you can identify just a couple of things, like mm -hmm. if you can see the moon and you can see one or two other planets, you can actually draw a line through those objects. And what you will have described is the path along which the planets travel through the sky. Once you sort of get used to that idea of connecting the moon with one or two planets, you can almost always 
figure out where planets are going to be in the sky. Which is so cool. It is, mm -hmm. it is. And these are tricks that ancient sky observers would have used and would have easily identified. Absolutely. What else do we have out there? We see satellites We orbiting. see satellites, That's sure. Right. Oh, we see meteors. We see meteor showers, also known as sure. shooting stars. Or falling stars. Or falling stars. Yeah. I think falling stars is a bit more your generation. I beg your we pardon. We call it shooting stars. Excuse me. <laughs> But what I always say yeah. to people is that stars don't fall and stars don't shoot. That's right. right. And I think it, a lot of people don't seem to know because it has the name of star, but actually the streaks you see across the sky are created by grain size dust particles even that just burn up in the atmosphere. And because they're moving at such high speeds, you see this beautiful streak. And you imagine that it's going to be a big object that makes that, but no, it's literally the size of a grain. I think that's one of the most surprising things of mm -hmm. all, that they are so small. Yes. On any clear night when you go out, you have a chance of seeing perhaps as many as 10 meteors per hour. So almost any night we go out is a rewarding right. night to look. Yeah, absolutely. But now, <laughs> comets are entirely different because these are balls of frozen gas, mostly carbon dioxide, mm -hmm. with some rock and dust and dirt mixed in. But they come from all the way out near the edge of the solar system, yeah. pulled in by the sun's gravity, fall into an orbit around the sun, mm -hmm. and over time, with each pass around the sun, they melt a little bit, get smaller and smaller. And you know, a comets can actually eventually completely evaporate altogether and disappear. Wow, how sad. Well, the good connection though is that <laughs> the dust that comes out of the nucleus of the comet eventually becomes those meteors that we see exactly. in the night sky. Exactly. So yeah. those shooting stars are literally just passing through debris. That's the right. tail of a comet. Things being visible in the sky, unfortunately, gets impeded by a lot of light pollution. When you're closer to a city like we are, Philly, LA, even Columbus, Ohio, yeah, you know, <laughs> we don't get to see what our ancestors saw. I, I've heard stories from people who have asked me, how come I don't see as many stars in the sky as I used to? And I often say to them, um, where did you grow up? And they'll say, oh, I grew up in rural Pennsylvania or I grew up in rural Ohio. Yeah. And that tells me that they grew up at a time when the skies were much darker. There wasn't so much light around at night. Definitely. Like you say, now that we have all the lights in an urban area, it makes it difficult for us to see a lot of these objects like meteors and comets in the sky. I heard sometime in the 80s, I believe, LA went through a massive blackout. And I think, allegedly, everybody freaked out. And so many people called into Griffith like, what the hell are we looking at? It was the Milky Way! One of those bright things we see in the sky! <laughs> that's right. You shouldn't be seeing all that much, and that's crazy that there are people, you know, well, most people of today, who have never actually seen the sky for its true beauty. Yeah, so you're right I about urge that. everybody I ever meet to take some time, drive to Joshua Tree, drive to the middle of nowhere, even sure. just for a couple of hours, yeah. and truly see what the sky should be like. Anytime you can move away from the bright lights of the city at mm -hmm. night, you're gonna improve your chances of seeing cool things in the sky. Exactly, our own Milky Way. It's quite profound. And that's very important for kids because there are there's a generation of kids that are growing up now that don't really know what a night sky looks that's like. That's exactly right. They're all down here, so take them elsewhere where there's no service too, bonus, and yes. then have them look up. Exactly. Yeah, and it'll change your life. I think you're right. Mm -hmm. Good idea for people to go out and take a look at the night sky. Right, what a concept. 